I'm looking at my request list. New Year's Day? Well, I don't know about that one, but we, I got a list here I'm going on. Uh, somebody wanted to hear this song that happens up in Canada. And uh, it's dedicated to their friend who's, who's 80 years old and grew up uh, a few miles away from this, where this song happened. This here's a folk song, you know. This is, uh, in case the night was not folky enough for you, this one, this one ought to do it. This is, check this out, this is an eight minute song. It's a true story. It happened in Canada. It happened in the 1800s. It was told to me on the spot where it happened. I'm using a minor key, and I'm using a capo, and there's an audience participation part in it. And the guy dies in it. I, I feel like any two or three of those would make it a folk song. But you've got ten. You've got ten qualified. Ten, ten qualifications. Ten criteria. Ten out of ten. And yet, You'd think everywhere I went, people would agree with me that this is a certified folk song, right? And I was fine until I got to Glasgow, Scotland a couple years ago, where they are unimpressed. Unimpressed with a folk song where only one person dies. <laughs> In the melting snows of Ontario, where the wind will make you shiver. It was the month of May up in Georgian Bay, near the mouth of the Musquash River. Where the bears prowl and the coyotes howl, you can hear the osprey scream. Back in 99, we were cutting pine and sending it down the stream. Young Sandy Gray came to go home bay all the way from P.I. Where the weather's rough and it makes you tough and no man's afraid to die. Sandy came a smile at $30,000 was the place to claim his glory. Now Sandy's gone but his name lives on. This is Sandy's story. Young Sandy Gray lives on today. The echoes of a mighty yell. Listen close, you'll hear a ghost in this story that I'll tell. Boys, this story that I'll tell. Now, Sandy Gray was boss of the men who'd toss the trees onto the shore. They'd come and go till they built a flow of a hundred thousand logs or more. They'd ride them down towards Severn Sound and cut them up in the mills for timber. And the ships would all spring, summer, and fall till the ice came in December. One Sabbath day, Big Sandy Gray came into camp with a PB on his shoulder. With a thunder crack, he dropped his axe and the room got a little bit colder. He said, come on all you, we got work to do, we gotta give her all we can give her. There's a jam of logs at the little jog near the mouth of the Musquash River. With no time to pray on the Lord's day, they were hoping for God's forgiveness. But the jam was high in a devil's sky. They set out about their business. They poked with their poles and ran with the rolls and tried to stay on their feet. Every trick they tried, the one man cried, this log jam's got his beat. But Sandy Gray was not afraid, he let out a mighty yell. I'll be down, we'll break this jam, or it's breakfast in hell, boys. It's breakfast in hell.
Now don't get nervous, I'm not gonna be all Pete Seeger on you and make you learn a whole bunch of words on the spot and memorize a bunch of words and a melody and all that. There's actually no words and there's no melody. Just what kind of backup part is this thing? Well, Scrappy, this is a work game, man. Right. All you need is a strong back and kind of a heave-ho kind of thing. But the key is I want everybody to pitch in. Scrappy and I are going to start off as your work game captains. And when I hear everybody doing their part, and only then, I'm going to start doing the next verse. All right? And everybody, man. Backs into it. Everybody, come on now. Everybody, oh, just move your lips and humor me. Everybody, every one of the men did the work of ten. Sandy scrambled up to the top. He's a worker like a dog, he can put foot logs in it like he'd never stop. And they struggled on, these men so strong, till the gym began to sleep. Cover to the banks of the river, all except for Sandy Gray. All right, you can stop now. That was pretty good work, gang. Best work, best work gang since we left Texas. Best one since we left Texas? Yeah. Without a doubt. All right, now before we move on, we've noticed over the years when we do this bit that. Uh, now, you don't have to raise your hand or be embarrassed or anything, but we have noticed that when we do that part, there's always a few people in the audience who are concentrating so hard on their part that they didn't hear what happened in that verse. And they get lost in the story. So for those people, we'll do a quick little recap. Is the, 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 the gang did their part, the log jam came crumbling down. But the bad news is, our hero, our captain, Sandy Gray, did not make it off in time. And that's where we're picking up the story. Now, with thoughts of death, they held their breath as they saw their friend go down. They all knew in a second or two he'd be crushed or frozen or drowned. Yeah, they saw him fall, they heard him call just once, then it was over. Young Sandy Gray gave his name that day near the mouth of the Musquash River. But Sandy Gray was not afraid, he let out a mighty yell. I'll be down, we'll break this jam, or it's breakfast in hell, boys, it's breakfast in hell. East the Giant's tomb, there's plenty of room, there's no fences and no walls, and if you listen close, you'll hear a ghost down by Sandy Gray Falls. Through the tops of the trees, you'll hear in the breeze echoes of a mighty yell. I'll be damned, we'll break this jam, or it's breakfast in hell. And Sandy Gray lives on today in the echoes of a mighty yell. I'll be damned, we'll break this jam, or it's breakfast in hell, boys. Breakfast now. 